Hey everyone, DAS developers within Coil have been talking a lot recently about how large of a machine we should recommend to people. And a lot of this comes down to the Python GIL. Uh, if the GIL is released in user code, you can recommend large machines. If the GIL is not released in user code, you should use many small machines instead. Both are fine, but this sort of question does have some performance impacts. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about Pandas, because Pandas is commonly used with Dask, and whether or not Pandas releases the GIL or when it does. So I'm going to talk through a little bit about how I go about exploring that question. Uh, I'm using a library here called Ptime, uh, which is made by Jim Christ, another Dask developer. And Ptime runs your code both sequentially in a for loop and in parallel with thread pool, and it compares the times of those two. And so I ran this code, which is very Gil heavy, and I found that running on eight threads, uh, it had a 1x speed up. So we got almost no speed up. Conversely, this NumPy code running with eight threads, I get about a six and a half x speed up running it in threads. So NumPy releases the Gil not perfectly, but pretty well in this case. Or it's releasing the Gil, there's some other limitation like memory bandwidth. But generally speaking, I get like pretty good speed ups with NumPy, I get pretty bad speed ups with pure Python code. How about Pandas? Right? Does Pandas release the Gil? When does it release the Gil? What kind of operations does it release the Gil on? And that can help us determine how large of machines we should request by default. Uh, I'm sitting here on a machine, it's a Jupyter server with 64 cores. I actually got this by asking for a coil cluster with a scheduler 64 cores and asking my DAS scheduler to run Jupyter. Um, it's a quick and easy way if you want a big machine running somewhere. So I've got this Pandas data frame. I'm using Dask just to make a data set, but this is just a Pandas data frame. And it's, it's a couple hundred megabytes in size. So let's run a group by operation. <clears throat> let's run a group by operation on the name column, which is a Python object type, a string column. Uh, and grouping on some pseudonumeric column. And what we see is that as we increase the number of cores that we're using from two to four to 16, we're sitting with about a two and a half X speed up. And so we're getting some parallelism, but not a lot. You would probably not want to use, you know, a 64 core worker with this kind of operation. You'd want to stay with smaller workers that are two cores or four cores, right? We're getting some speed up, but not, not 64 X. And that's probably because we're, we're grouping on this Python object type. And so the gil has to be involved a lot. But we could consider not just you know, Python object types, but also uh, numeric types, right? Pandas actually behaves very differently based on whether or not your data is Python objects, whether or not it's numeric. So here I'm using 16 cores and I'm getting an 11x speed up. And that's actually, that's actually pretty good, right? And if I go up to 32 or to 64, I get mm, still about an 11x speed up. I don't get you know, that full parallelism. And so what we've learned is that when Pandas is operating on string types or Python objects, it holds on to the gil a lot. When it operates on numeric data, you can use bigger machines pretty comfortably. The gil is not an issue. It's held maybe 5% to 10% of the time, resulting in a maximum speed up of around 10, 10x. Now what's exciting here is that uh, a lot of pandas is now being swapped out for Arrow, which is just pure, pure C++, no Python involved. And it's actually becoming pretty easy to use. Um, I've talked about this before in the past, but we can change Python object columns uh, to a string pi arrow dtype. This is actually decently well supported these days, it seems, so we're trying to recommend it more and more. And so now uh, I can group by this the name and I got you know two x speed up with two cores, I got a almost four x speed up with four cores. With sixteen cores, I get you know, about a twelve x speed up. Okay, so we're starting to see some limitations still. With thirty two and sixty four, I get you know sixteen x and you know sixteen x. What's interesting, so first, switching to PyRD types can be good, especially when you've got these Python objects sitting around. Also interestingly, like this was a little bit faster than pure numerics in pandas. It could be that switching to an arrow everywhere in pandas will be, will be interesting and give us better and better speed ups. So I'm sort of excited, I'm excited to watch this space. Um, anyway, the gil is definitely a problem in pandas code. It may be a problem in your code too. I recommend using libraries like Ptime 
to figure out if your code is releasing the gil or how parallelizable it is. It might not be the gil, it might be memory bandwidth, it might be disk access. There's lots of non-parallel parts to your computer that might be uh, creating a bottleneck. Um, and then, yeah, I'm also just generally excited. I don't worry about the gil too much because I think numeric code is pretty gil-free. And I think also we're starting to see things like Arrow come up, which I think should solve a lot of these problems for us. So again, if you want to play with this yourself, it was pretty easy. I asked for a cluster with just zero workers. I'm actually not using Dask here at all. I just want the big scheduler machine. Um, and I'm asking for Jupyter on that machine, and I just go to the dashboard. Uh, and then instead of looking at the Dask dashboard, Dask runs a Jupyter server, and I'm looking for Jupyter Lab. So uh, that's it. Thanks for your time.